Hello to all the primary schools in Ireland and thanks for joining Green Schools for our sixth National Climate Action Week. This special video is being brought to you live from Green Schools in Dublin. My name is Grania and I'm a Climate Action Officer and I have a really exciting programme for you today. So first up, let us know in the chat box what county you're tuning in from. Now, for the last two years, we've worked with one of Ireland's funniest children's authors and illustrators, Oshin McGann, to bring you a giant climate action storybook. And today we've brought Oshin back with a brand new drawing lesson just for you. So who likes our native Irish hair? Have you ever been lucky enough to spot one? Well, get your pencils and paper ready now, and then you can draw along with Oshin after the story. But before we hear from Oshin, I'd like to ask you, you in your classroom, out there, some of these pre-reading questions from page six in the teacher's resource pack. We'll share the link to the teacher's resource pack in the chat now, so you might like to do one or two of the activities after this webinar. So what do we think of the cover art? I'll give you a minute to talk about it in class now. Do you have any place near your school or home that looks like this? What do we think the story might be about? What clue does the title give us? I'll read the bl blurb on the back. When a group of friends arrive to play at their local park, they find a crowd of adults running around. The grown-ups are making a big mess and upsetting the animals. So the children decide to do something about it. We Want Our Park Back has been written and illustrated by Oshin McGann and produced by Green Schools. So, who is ready for story time with the author? I'm Ashin McGann and I'm a writer and illustrator which means that I, I write stories and draw pictures for books and this is a book I did for Green Schools um, that I'm going to read to you now and I always like looking for the extra little things in pictures and books you know things that don't kind of get mentioned in the story but are interesting to look at um, and I did this book with loads of little details that I, I thought um, kids would enjoy picking out so I'm going to read it to you now and see I'll, I'll talk about some of the stuff in the pictures but see what else you can spot as well Some grown-ups came to the park today and all their cars are blocked away. They're making a mess with the way they play. Now we can't play here anymore. So there's the guy up the front look on his phone and he's calling all his mates in and the adults are all charged into the park but they've left their cars blocking up the gate and the kids can't get in. Just look what they did to all the trees for wood, for fire to make their tea. They took all they could and more than they need. Now we can't play here anymore. So look, the adults are kind of knocking down the trees. This guy with a chainsaw there at the back. And there's a woman sitting on the trees that falls down. And there's a woman up the front. And I think she thinks she's a deer or something. And the hare there beside her, he doesn't look very happy, does he? Look, they've lit a fire already. They cooked up smoke with their campfires too, burning wood they took and the smoke it blew in our faces too, a sick stinky stew. Now we can't play here anymore. 
So now they've all lit fires and there's um, smoke everywhere. It's kind of, they're all coughing and choking on it, holding their nose. Look at the guy, look at that guy. I think he's, he, his bum's on fire, but they do have a fire extinguisher, so he'll probably be all right. But still, not being very careful. Look at this rubbish. It's filled the lake, all the yucky gunk only humans make. More poisonous junk than the lake can take. Now we can't play here anymore. So the, the lake's absolutely stuffed with stuff. You can see a tractor tire and a shopping trolley and look, they, they fished a welly out of the, the, the lake with a fishing rod. I think that belongs to the woman over there with the hat. And the fish can't breathe. They're sticking their faces up out of the water. The water's so dirty. Um, there's loads of stuff on the bank. So they've really made a mess of that lake. Um, and I, the guy at the back there, he's pushing over a port -a -loo. The trees, they held all the earth in place on the river banks where the river raced. The water's flooding all over the place. Now we can't play here anymore. So there's a guy in a canoe there. He's trying to back out, but the water's rushing down into the field, kind of draining out of the river because they've cut all the trees away and the trees were holding all the grass and the earth in place. Even the kids are having to run off. Um, Fox looks a bit scared, doesn't he? These grown-ups play in the playground too. They break and take and think it's cool. It looks like a big dump. It smells like a loo. Now we can't play here anymore. I'm sure you've all seen kind of broken stuff in playgrounds. I always think it's a bit annoying. So there's a fire lit again and there's a broken swing and that guy's on the other swing. He's flying off into the air and one guy looks like he's going to cut the, the um, cable there. And uh, they've made an absolute mess of the place. I don't know if grown-ups should be playing in playgrounds, really. They keep taking stuff. They keep burning stuff. They just won't stop. But enough's enough. And we want our park back. I think the kids are looking really annoyed now. What do you think? They leave in their cars, smoke spouting out. It's in our noses and in our mouths and the air is stinky. We cough and shout that we can't play here anymore. So look at all that smoke coming out of those cars. You can barely breathe in the air. There's so much thick smoke. We can fix this yet. We still have time with work and hope with your brains and mine. We can plant and fix and clear the air, but we can't do this on our own. So we look at the park now and it's absolutely wrecked. The fence is wrecked, there's fires lit, there's litter all over the place, trees chopped down. It's in an awful state. I don't know if the kids are gonna be able to do this on their own. But we're not alone, I'm glad to say. They feel sorry now that they ran away. Now everyone's back in the park today and they won't spoil things anymore. So things are getting fixed up now. Uh, things are looking a bit better. They're planting new trees, clearing the place up. Um, starting to feel a bit more hopeful. It takes time to fix all the damage done, but we're finished now. We can have some fun, all the kids and the grown-ups, everyone. Now we can play here all day long. And that's what a park's supposed to look like. Lots of green, kids playing, place looking good. So that's my story. We want our park back. Um, I'm Ushi McGann. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks very much for listening. Today I'm going to be showing you how I draw characters for the books. Um, I'm going to be drawing one character in particular. I'm going to be drawing this hair here. You can see on the front of the, the book. And a hare, if you don't know, a hare is like a rabbit, except it tends to have longer legs. They tend to be bigger and they have longer ears. Um, and they're very fast. Um, they're really good at jumping. They're very agile animals. So um, in this story, this hare is watching what's happening. The adults wrecking the park and they're really annoyed about it. So um, if you want, you can follow along, you can draw your own animal or you can draw anything you like, I don't care. I am, I'm all for drawing in any form. Um, 
but I'm going to show you some of the things I one of some of the the tricks I use and some of the ways I draw um and you can follow along and you can try and do it yourself if you want now I just put this away uh so when I was young uh, I wanted to be a zoologist and that's somebody who studies animals I loved animals and I loved drawing animals although I ended up kind of just want to write and draw pictures really um but when I start off drawing now um I still make mistakes you know when I draw um, so I need to start off with a pencil. So I'll be so starting with a pencil. Now I'll be drawing quite heavily on the page so that you can see because it's on screen. But normally I try and draw very lightly so that it's easy to rub out. And as you'll see, when I start off drawing, it's really quite sketchy. It's very scribbly. I'm not trying to be too neat. And when I was young, I wanted to draw like all the pictures in the books. You know, I thought they were brilliant, but they all seemed so tight and, and neat and perfectly done. Um, but actually, as you'll see, Nowadays, when I'm working on my, my illustrations, I start off very loose and rough at the start, and then I make it kind of neater towards the end. So let's get started. Let's draw this hair. Now, the hair doesn't have a name, so if you want to give them a name, that's up to you. Um, you know, by all means, it, it can be a he or a she as well. Um, I'm going to say it's a she today, just for the sake of it, but it's entirely up to you. You can make your own character out of it. So I'm going to start off, and it'll be quite rough at the start I mean it'll be it'll hardly look like anything you won't believe how messy it is <clears throat> um, and at the start I'm gonna make them quite scribbly lines so I'm, I'm just being loose I'm just kind of marking where things are gonna go and just doing kind of rough shapes I'm not trying to do a very tight outline um, but you'll start to see the shape fairly quickly and she's going to be standing up. So put the legs down here. And she's also going to be... So again, see the way I'm just really quickly marking them in. So what I'm doing here is what we call it composition. And that's where you're planning where things are going to go on the page. Um, so, and she's going to be folded. She's going to have her arms folded. So I'm going to just mark that in. Um, she's annoyed. Um, so, can't believe this is happening to her park. She's, she's so annoyed with everything that's going on. Um, now again, I'm not trying to draw everything too neatly, but I do want to get the kind of position of the eyes right, because the eyes are really important. So, we're just going to mark that in here. And you can see most, you can see all of one eye, and then only some of the other eye because it's kind of on the other side of the head, really. Um, okay. So even though it's quite scribbly, you can kind of see the shape it's going to be. I'm not, as I, as I said, I haven't tried to make the lines really neat or anything. Um, oh, I forgot a tail. Hair has to have a tail. She's like a rabbit. She's got a big fluffy tail at the back. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, so it's still scribbly, and like I said, nice and loose. And now I'm going to go over it. I'm going to make the lines a bit neater. Um, and we'll start up. Normally, it's best to start at the top and work down so that you're not kind of running your arm over the drawing too much. So we'll start with the one ear here. And there's that kind of, you know, there's a section inside the ear, which will often make a lighter colour and the other ear so the ears are kind of back a little bit i think that kind of helps show that she's annoyed one of the things we're trying to do with, with our drawings is to trying to get the expression right you know to show what the character's feeling they have this tuft outside their head so as i said i'm drawing quite heavily here but when i draw from my own from my own pictures that people don't actually have to see when they're starting off um i'll draw lightly so I can rub things out. Um, oh, we have to have the we have to have the teeth. Gotta have those big buck teeth. There we go. So again, go over these lines, make them a little bit heavier. Now, um, rabbits are like us; they have kind of four digits. They have four fingers, um, but actually. 
in cartoony uh, drawing, we often only give three fingers. It just kind of keeps the hand a bit simple, simpler. Um, so. There we go. And um, when we're doing kind of animals like this, quite often we'll, we'll there are certain shapes around the face that are really important. So the eyes obviously are very important. And you'll notice in the book, some of the animals have this lighter patch. We kind of pick out the eyes and they might also have a, a lighter patch around the mouth um, because they're kind of the important parts of the face. And we, we often use this in cartoons. It makes you look kind of look at the face more, draws your eyes to it. Um, so rub that out there. Now, here's a, these big, long, strong back legs, very powerful back legs. And if you're ever wondering why, when you look at a four-legged animal, like a dog or a cat or a horse, you often might wonder why their legs look like they're bent backwards. But actually, they're not. Um, what's happening there is their, their bones are actually very similar to ours, but they're shaped in a slightly different way. So that bit you think is bending backwards that's actually the ankle. Um, so if you imagine them as being up on their toes, that leg starts to make a bit more sense. Okay. Um, no, I think she's looking pretty good. So we're kind of clearer now. Um, and not only now when I when I reach this stage of the drawing, I, I kind of I would often do it a little bit neater than this, just so I kind of can get all the lines right. Um, so now I'm going to do what's called inking. Now often when I'm drawing a picture for a book, I'll use there are different kinds of things I can use. Um, these will be some of them. So this is a really thin brush. I'll use that for inking sometimes, or I'll use these kind of drawing pens. Um, as you can see, if I can get the tops off. Sorry. That one's not coming off. It's stuck. Oh, here we go. So um, I use these different kinds of pens for inking. Um, or the brush is probably best. Um, but for this, I need it to be big and bold so you can see it, you know, and then I also need to be quick. And also markers don't spill, which is great. Um, so I'm going to use a marker. I just realized I didn't put that second bit of the year in there. Um, <clears throat> and the marker will make it look more like an illustration, more like a picture in a book, um, because it's a proper ink line. Now, when I did the, the book, We Want Our Park Back, I actually painted everything. So there aren't actually many outlines. Um, but for this, we're just gonna do a strong outline. So I'm gonna start at the top, remember, start at the top, work down. And I'll break the line, see how I kind of break the line, kind of look like there's tufts of fur in places. There we go. And we're going to do that bit inside the ears. Okay. And you can see the black line just kind of makes things, it defines them, it makes them easier to see. It kind of shows the shape a bit better. Um, so we're going to go around the head here. So now I am taking more care with the outline. And you can still see the pencil, I can still see the scribbly bit, which I quite like. But you don't see that in the books, because when I'm doing this in a book, I will do the black line on a, on a clean sheet of paper, a completely new sheet of paper, and I'll trace the pencil line. So you may, you, you kind of might wonder why do you never see these sketchy bits in the books themselves? And it's because we cheat, we hide them away. Um, So like I said, you know, take good care with the eyes. And we do want to look annoyed here. So she kind of, I'm going to watch what I do with this eye now. I'm going to have a bit of an eyebrow. Okay. Even though they don't really have eyebrows and a line down here. And that kind of does this to the eye, it makes it look more annoyed. Okay. So remember, one of the really important things about drawing characters is the expressions, you know, the emotion on the face. Um, and we spend a lot of time trying to get that right. Okay. 
Now, there's the nose. And again, like the eye. You notice on the eye, I leave a little bit of white there. And that makes it look shiny. It makes it look a bit more alive. And... Again, the mouth is a big part of showing the expression. So the arms are crossed, looking very annoyed. Um, And just a little bit every every now and again I do these little tufts just to make it look like she has fur. <clears throat> um, so you'll notice on the if you look at the character in the book, she has these light patches, as I said, around the eyes and around the, the mouth, and also down the front, down the belly. Um, and she'd have a light tail as well. And all these things kind of help. They help show the shape of the animal better. There's these legs. Remember, four-legged animal standing on their toes. That's why they have those legs look like, looking like they're bent backwards. And I'm going to put in a bit of shadow here at the bottom. And the shadow, kind of just putting shadow under the feet, makes it look like the feet are definitely standing on the ground. So they're not kind of floating around. Um, so there she is. She's kind of nearly finished, I think. Um, I think I'm actually going to add some grey. I'm going to use the pencil to add some grey and give her a little bit of colour just to kind of show where, you know, she's kind of got these two colours in her. Um, so I'm going to shade her in a bit. Shading is just where we make some part of the, the picture darker. But I think just having a bit of grey will make her colour, her, her shape stand out better. Make those light areas in the face stand out better. So if I'm colouring a picture, I normally use paint. Um, sometimes I'll paint on the computer. So we want our part back was painted on the computer. Um, but you can use watercolour or a paint called gouache um, or acrylics. There's lots of different types of paints. Um, or if you like using markers, if you just draw them for yourself, markers are good, colouring pencils, even crayons. Whatever makes the right mark, that's the right tool. So, so as I said, this character doesn't have a name. Um, I didn't, you know, when I was drawing it, I didn't even think of it as a, a he or a she. It could be anything. Um, so you can you can kind of recreate this character and you can design it yourself. Um, I'm just gonna add a little, and and always sign your work. Um, so there we go. That's the hair from We Want Our Park Back. Um, so thanks for green. Th thanks to Green Schools for setting this up. My name's Ushi McGann. I hope you enjoyed that. And thanks for watching. Oshin, thank you so much for joining us today and reading your storybook for all the classrooms in Ireland this Climate Action Week. If anyone out there has a question for Oshin, type it in the Q&A box now and we'll answer those in a couple of minutes. I cannot wait to see all of the children's drawings of the hair, but don't worry if you haven't finished yet, you'll have plenty of time 
for the rest of this week. Once you've finished colouring it in, we'll ask your teacher or parent to post a photo of your hair on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. Tag Green Schools Ireland and use the hashtag Climate Action Week. One lucky person will win Oshin's signed drawing. But that's not all we have. If you have a copy of the book in your classroom now, can you find out what page the hair is on? Quick, let us know in the chat box and the first correct answer will win a signed copy of We Want Our Park Back. We'll also share the e-copy in the chat now. Anyone got it yet? Now, we don't even know if this little hair is a boy or a girl, but would you like to give them a name? Um, suggest a name in the chat box and we'll let Oshin choose his favourite. And we'll also send the winner a signed copy of the book. OK, the last thing I want you to do is choose a climate pledge from your resource pack. Students can pick from pages 35 and 36 and teachers and parents can choose from pages 37 and 38. So why not get the whole school community involved this Climate Action Week? Once everyone in the class has decided on their new pledge, you can string them all together and make some really colourful bunting to decorate your classroom or corridor this Climate Action Week. You're already learning about climate change, so that's a great one there. You could also use your voice by writing a letter to a local politician or business. Host a swap shop um, this Halloween maybe for costumes so that nobody buys a new costume. Everything is either made or upcycled or swapped. And that brings us to the end of our show. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you're really enjoying Climate Action Week and have some exciting plans of your own. Stay tuned to see our latest animation project and bye for now from Green Schools. Some grown-ups came to the park today and all their cars have blocked the way. They are making a mess with the way they play. Now we can't play here anymore. Just look what they did to all the trees for wood for fire to make their tea. They took all they could and more than they need. Now we can't play here anymore. They cooked up smoke with their campfires too. Burning wood they took and smoke it blew. In our faces too, a sick stinky stew. Now we can't play here anymore. Look at this rubbish, it's filled the lake. All the yucky gunk only humans make. More poisonous junk than the lake can take. Now we can't play here anymore. The trees they held all the earth in place on the river banks where the river raced. The waters flooding all over the place. Now we can't play here anymore. These grown-ups play in the playground too. They break and take and think it's cool. It looks like a big dump. It smells like a loo. Now we can't play here anymore. They keep taking stuff. They keep burning stuff. They just won't stop. But enough's enough and... We want our park back! They leave in their cars. Smoke spouting out. It's in our noses and in our mouths. And the air is stinky. We cough and shout that we, we can't, can't play here anymore. We can't fix this yet. We still have time. With work and hope, with your brains and mine. We can plant and fix and clear the air. But we, we can't, can't do this on our own. own.
but we're not alone. I'm glad to say they feel sorry now that they ran away. Now everyone's back in the park today and, and they, they won't spoil things anymore. It takes time to fix all the damage done, but we've finished now, we can have some fun. All the kids and the grown-ups, everyone. Now we can play!